good morning my dear students in the last session we have seen the group 3 and group 4 cc itt compression methods at that time i told you that the group 3 cc itt compression method makes use of mainly one dimensional compression and occasionally or optionally it can use two dimensional compression also but the group for compression cc uh, methods in cc itt employs two dimensional cc itt compression alone uh, and in today's session we are going to see in detail what are the important aspects of two dimensional cc itt compression this 2d approach adopted for both ccitt group 3 and group 4 standards is working like this that is it is a line by line method in which the position of each black to white or white to black run transition is coded with respect to the position of a reference element a0 that is situated on the current coding line the previously coded line is called a reference line the reference line for the first line of each new image is an imaginary white line since there is no uh, image line before the first line we are taking as a, an imaginary line as the reference line the 2d technique that is employed here is known as relative element address designate or popularly it is known as read coding r e d read coding in the group 3 standard one or three read coded lines are allowed between successive m h coded lines that is modified half man coded lines that i already explained to you and this technique employed in group 3 is known as modified read coding or m r coding in the group 4 standard a greater number of read coded lines are allowed and this method is called modified modified read coding that is modified modified read coding or m m r coding and as already i told you the coding is two dimensional in the sense that the information from the previous line is used to encode the current line that is what is meant by two dimensional coding and now so our topic is two dimensional cc itt compression and i am now showing you a figure in which cc itt 2d read coding procedure is explained and it is to be noted that the initial steps of the procedure are directed at locating several key changing elements so here the important point is changing element so the, here the changing elements are a0 a1 a2 then b1 and b2 a changing element is defined by the standard as a pixel whose value is different from that of the previous pixel on the same line the most important changing element is a0 that is already i told you it is known as the reference element and it is either set to the location of an imaginary white changing element to the left of the first pixel of each new coding line or determined from the previous coding mode and after a0 is located a1 is identified as the location of the next changing element to the right of a0 on the current coding line a2 as the next changing element to the right of a1 on the coding line b1 as the changing element of the opposite value of a0 
and to the right of a0 on the reference line or on the previous line and b2 as the next changing element to the right of b1 on the reference line and if these any of these changing elements are not detected they are set to the location of an imaginary pixel to the right of the last pixel on the appropriate line then after identification of the current reference element and associated changing elements two simple steps are performed to select one of the three possible coding modes there are three possible coding modes here which are very important the first one is a pass mode the second one is a vertical mode and the third one is a horizontal mode if you look at the flowchart you can see that the initial test the initial test which corresponds to which corresponds to the first branch point in the flowchart compares the location of b2 to that of a1 it compares the location of b2 to that of a1 the second test which corresponds to the second branch point in the flowchart computes the distance in pixels between the locations of a1 and b1 and compares it against 3 that is modulus of a1 b1 less than or equal to 3 is written in the flowchart that you can see now that you can see now then depending on the outcome of these tests one of the three outlined coding blocks of the flowchart is entered and the appropriate procedure is executed a new reference element is then established as per the flowchart in the preparation for the next coding iteration and now i am going to show you a table here i am going to show you a table and this table defines specific codes utilized for each of the three possible coding modes in the table you can see that in the pass mode which specifically executes the case in which b2 is directly above a1 b2 is directly above a1 only the pass code pass mode code word triple zero one is needed in the table you can see that the code word corresponding to the pass mode is triple zero one then i am going to show you another figure that is figure 8.15 in your video and this figure as this figure shows this mode identifies white or black reference line runs that do not overlap with the current white or black coding line runs in horizontal coding mode the distances from a0 to a1 and a2 to a1 to a2 must be coded in accordance with the termination and makeup codes of tables that I have shown you in the previous session. And then appended to the horizontal code word triple zero double zero one. This is indicated in table in the table that I am showing now. by the notation 001 plus that is the, uh, the code word against horizontal mode so the mode is given the left column and the code word is given in the right column 
so you can see that corresponding to the horizontal mode the code word used is 001 plus m of a 0 a1 plus m of a1 a2 and here a0 a1 and a1 a2 denote the distances from a0 to a1 and a1 to a2 respectively finally in the vertical coding mode one of the six special variable length chords is assigned to the distance between a1 and b1 so these chords are designed in such a way that whatever may be the distance between a1 and b1 we can give an appropriate code then i am showing you an example figure for this is already shown by myself and now i am going to show you figure 8.15 b that is horizontal and vertical mode coding parameters and the extension mode code the extension mode code word i am again going to show the table here as the last entry we can see an extension mode and its code word the extension mode code word at the bottom of the table is used to enter an optional fax coding mode so it is an optional fax coding mode and here you can see that the code is a special code that is six zeros then followed by one and some three other characters and that may be either zero or one or uh, three uh, binary bits are present after that and uh, as an example of this code you can uh, uh, say say triple six triple zero four ones triple zero four one code is used to initiate an uncompressed mode of transmission so it, this code is this uh, extension code is used in fax or facsim facsimile transmission and now we are going back to the previous figure that is figure 8.15 in your video and this figure that is figure b you look at the figure b and this figure b is annotated with the parameters for both horizontal and vertical mode both horizontal mode and vertical mode coding the depicted pattern of black and white pixels is a case for vertical mode coding is a case for vertical code mode coding that is because b2 is to the right of a1 because b2 is to the right of a1 the first or pass mode test in the previous uh, flowchart that is flowchart for 2d ccitt compression fails the second test which determines whether the vertical or horizontal coding mode is entered indicates that the vertical mode coding should be used because the distance from a1 to b1 is less than 3 the condition that i have already specified that is uh, modulus of a1 b1 should be less than or equal to 3 already i have specified the condition while discussing the flowchart and according to our table for mode and uh, code words the appropriate code word is actually four zeros then one zero last but 
2. The third last that is uh, a1 2 to the left of b1 that entry is to be considered then. So the code is 4 zeros 1 zero implying that a1 is 2 pixels left of b1. a1 is 2 pixels left of b1 from the figure b 8.15 b we can easily understand this point. In preparation for the next coding iteration, A0 is moved to the location of A1 and, and this point is also explained in our flowchart. And that's all for the day. Thank you very much.